An Ohio state representative last night said she was going to make a referral to the International Criminal Court to have Donald Trump tried for crimes against humanity. The tweet she put out received something like 63,000 retweets, and it is completely insane for many reasons. Now, the reason she the reason she wanted Trump to be tried is that he was touting a combination of drugs, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, which is being recommended in many countries. And Trump has said it may work, it may not. But the media, in their desperate attempt to constantly make the president look bad, have smeared him over and over again. They tried smearing him, saying that because some woman and her husband ate fish tank antiparasitics, that it was somehow Trump's fault because he was touting this drug. They take him out of context. And then when the American people start to see through the media lies, what happens? The media shuts off his press events. Well, there's a side effect to the media smears. The Democrats end up eating all of this nonsense up, believing it. Because there are polls that show, and we've seen many of them, Democrats tend to trust the press. Conservatives tend not to. So the media, their game is to get clicks. If Trump comes out and says it, it must be wrong no matter what. That's what they do. And now it's backfiring. The data shows that there are positive results in many studies for the, uh, with the use of azithromycin and hydroxychloroquine. Now in New York, they're seeing positive results and it is being used to treat people. And now some of these governors who recently said, no, no, we can't allow this are now saying, please, please, we need this medicine. It's being recommended in other countries. The CDC says so. But people like this, this woman, her name is Tavia Galansky. She just reads the news and believes it all. But their goal isn't to inform you. It's to shock you into giving them ratings. And now it is backfiring horribly. It goes beyond this, though. Democratic strategists are worried right now that their attack ads against Trump are going to backfire. It's because the American people are tuned in right now. They got nothing else to do. So they are watching the news. They're listening to what the president has to say. And many of them are seeing the flip flopping from the media makes no sense. They'll say Trump didn't, you know, Trump's travel ban is bigoted and, he sh- and it's not going to do anything anyway. And then a month later, they're like, actually, the travel ban isn't strong enough. I assure you, in about a month or so, or I'd be willing to make the bet, all of the media naysayers on this drug treatment, assuming that, you know, the trend continues and the positive results continue, will flip and say Trump didn't do enough to get us this medication. For the time being, we are going to see resistance type people embarrass themselves with ridiculous assertions like Trump is committing manslaughter. I kid you not. I've got the tweets. And these Democrats saying Trump should be charged with, you know, crimes against humanity. That's actually what they're doing. So let's do this. I want to walk you through this. And I also want to point out that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to this part of the story. Joe Biden, the attack ads on the Democrats, it is a shame. We are in a crisis right now, and all they can do is try to investigate the president or put out fake ads against him. And it's going to backfire, and they know it. They were warned, and now the strategists are concerned. It's actually starting to backfire. Let's take a look at this first story, which is going viral, which is absolutely insane. Before we get started, however, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's several ways you can give, but the best thing you can do, share this video. It really does help the channel grow. YouTube, they, they play silly games in their algorithm. They almost never surface independent content. You're going to get mainstream media. So if you share this, it helps my channel survive. Also, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit the like button if you do think my content is worth watching. The Hill reports, Ohio lawmaker says she'll press charges, she'll press crimes against humanity charge against Trump over hydroxychloroquine promotion. Ohio State Rep Tavia Galansky said that she will make a referral to the crimes, uh, a referral for crimes against humanity over President Trump's promotion of the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for the novel coronavirus, despite its unproven benefits and lack of long-term food and drug administration approval. L- lack of? They've actually already approved it, the Hill. I can't take it anymore. I've been to the hog. I'm making a referral for crimes against humanity tomorrow, she tweeted late Sunday. Today's press conference was the last straw, Galansky added. I know the need for a prosecution referral when I see one. Oh, and I'm going to show you what she's referring to in that press conference. It's sad. Galansky, who represents the Akron area, told the Ohio Capital Journal on Sunday that she had no idea how she was going to go about such a referral. Oh, okay. How hard can it be? Galansky, a former magistrate in the Summit Count, the Summit Count Common Pleas Court added, 
Trump has repeatedly promoted hydroxychloroquine, which is approved to treat conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus as a potential treatment for the coronavirus, which the FDA said last week has led to a shortage of the drug. At a press briefing late Sunday, the president recommended the drug despite limited evidence of its efficacy in the treatment of the virus, saying, what do we have to lose? I'm not looking at it one way or another, but we want to get out of this. If it does work, it would be a shame if we didn't do it early. Trump basically gave this wager. He said, we know the drug is safe because it has been approved for other uses. We know anecdotally we've, that, there, that there are positive results. If we prescribe this, it's not going to harm people because the doctors are going to tell them. And if it doesn't do anything, well, it's a shame. If it does do something, then we should absolutely use it. Now, that's not completely logically sound, but you get the point. It's mostly based on the fact that other countries are recommending this. And Trump has said, look, if they're doing it in China and in Europe, we should at least take their data to, uh, into consideration and consider using this medication, for which the media has smeared Trump relentlessly. And, I, well, and I'll show you. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease Director Anthony Fauci has, re- has reportedly been at odds with the White House trade advisor Peter Navarro about promoting hydroxychloroquine and said Sunday that its benefits remain largely unknown. The data are really just at best suggestive. There have been cases that show there may be an effect, and there are others that show no effect, Fauci said on CBS's Face the Nation. So I think in terms of science, I don't think we could definitively say it works. Ohio Department of Health Director Amy Acton has asked residents of the state not to seek hydroxychloroquine prescriptions unless they have a medical need. The state board of pharmacy has also implemented an emergency rule restricting access to the drug after a wave of stockpiling by Ohioans following Trump's comments. Now, that's not on Trump if people do things that are insane. No, look, if Trump says nothing, they say he's downplaying. And if he comes out and says something, they'll say he's causing fear mongering. He's fear mongering. If Trump doesn't talk about this in a month, they'd be like, why wouldn't Trump get this medication out? And if he does, they say he's causing people to hoard. There's just no way that Trump could actually address this. But guess what? The Democrats are starting to fall for this and they're starting to recognize it's backfiring. Let's take a look at that press conference. Trump blocks Fauci from answering question about drug Trump is touting. Now, this is where we can see it's the media at fault. Anthony Fauci was once again, once again asked about the medical evidence. Trump steps in. Standing at the microphone, Fauci opened his mouth. But before he could speak, the answer came out of Trump's instead. Oh, heavens. Do you know how many times he's answered that question Trump can in? Maybe 15. A tight smile stretched across Fauci's face. His eyes, framed by a pair of wire-rimmed glasses, flicked quickly to Trump. Oh, I just, I can't stand when the journalists do this narrative writing. I don't care about how you describe his rimmed glasses and he flicking at Trump. Just tell us what happened. Fauci smiled just for a moment, with, was all teeth now. Trump raised his finger sternly, telling the journalist, you don't have to ask the question. And so Fauci didn't answer it. And the new news conference shuffled along. The unexpected interruption was an extraordinary moment, even in the season of brash behavior exhibited by the president during his daily briefings. While Trump has been at odds with Fauci in the past, repeatedly clouding his administration's public health messaging, the president has never shut down his top medical experts so abruptly and publicly before, intervening to keep him from answering. In other contexts, the president routinely calls on Fauci for medical questions. He was interrupting because the media won't shut up about this. They keep asking the exact same questions over and over again. And no, Fauci has even said they're not at odds. They're on the same page about this. Trump has said it may work. It may not work. It may work. It may not work. Trump said, I feel good about it. That I, I feel good about. That's all it is. It's a feeling. That's it. Could you imagine having a president who told you there was no hope ever? Fauci is giving us his medical opinion. I respect it. He said that the, there's, there's no hard data yet. It's anecdotal. That's fair. Trump makes a point from a, from a presidential standpoint where he's trying to give people hope. But what do we get from, from the resistance? You're going to love it. You got to love it. Glenn Kirshner, Trump's conduct. He's responding to Tavia Galensky, by the way. Trump's conduct easily satisfies all three elements of involuntary manslaughter. In fact, his gross negligence is beginning to look a lot more like conduct evincing a conscious disregard of an extreme risk of death, serious bodily injury. The standard for depraved heart, second degree murder. Are you kidding me? (laughs) I can't do it anymore. Trump could be charged with second degree murder. Oh, 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 heavens. Really? Come on, man. This is insane. 
How insane. Trump, Trump's like, there's a, there's a treatment being used around the world. We should look into it. Murder, I say. Oh, man. I'm sorry for yelling into the microphone. You know what? Take a look at this. Hydroxychloroquine rated most effective therapy by doctors for a coronavirus global survey. Drug known for treating malaria used by doctors, mostly for high risk COVID uh, patients. So there are many doctors saying, hey, OK, you know, how about this one? How about another story? L.A. doctor seeing success with hydroxychloroquine to treat COVID-19. Oh, oh, heavens. Could it be that there are doctors recommending this? Trump then comes out and says, hey, maybe we should look into this. And then the resistance says Trump should be charged with murder and crimes against humanity. Oh, I love it. These people are out of their minds. Can't they? Don't they get tired of being wrong all the time? I just don't understand when the CDC says this on the CDC.gov website. A study in China reported that chloroquine treatment of COVID-19 patients had clinical and viro vi virological benefits versus a comparison group. And chloroquine was added as a recommended antiviral for treatment of COVID-19 in China. Based upon limited in vitro and anecdotal data, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are currently recommended for treatment of hospitalized COVID-19 patients in several countries. Both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine have known safety profiles with the main concerns being cardiotoxicity, prolonged QT syndrome, with prolonged use in patients with hepatic and renal dysfunction and immunosuppression, but have reportedly well tolerated, but have been reportedly well tolerated, tolerated in COVID-19 patients. You want to talk about Fauci, your expert? How about the CDC, your expert organization? How about all the countries that are using this? Look, I'm not saying it's a cure. I don't know. I can only defer to the medical experts. But what's fascinating to me is that YouTube has put out guidelines about what I, I am not allowed to talk about. And they say, I'm not allowed to go against medical and scientific consensus on coronavirus. Well, I wouldn't anyway. I defer to the experts. And the experts are saying it actually looks pretty good. From the politicians to the health experts, they're saying it looks pretty good. So how about this, YouTube? Why don't you go to all these YouTube channels that keep saying it's bad and ban them? Oh, what's that? When you go to the front page of YouTube, they give you mainstream media. Wonderful. Which is why I've said, if you like this video, consider sharing it. Because I'll show you the actual CDC website saying Trump ain't wrong. Tr in fact, they won up Trump. Trump said it might work, it might not, but I'm hopeful. Well, the CDC actually says several countries are using it and it's well tolerated and China's actually using it for treatment. That's one more than what Trump said. Incredible, isn't it? Take a look at this. Thousands of New York COVID patients are being treated with anti-malarial drug. Oh, you don't say. And what was the result? Andrew Cuomo says today, use of anti-malarial drug in New York hospitals anecdotally positive. Excellent. So what's the big problem? Why would Trump be charged with crimes against humanity by the hog, the International Criminal Court, when countries in Europe and China are using it? What crime against humanity for saying, hey, maybe it'll work? I don't know. And the CDC saying, sure, these people have lost their minds. Trump charged with second degree murder. I tell you what, the Democrats need to panic. This is from the Washingtonian. Trump's approval rating has reached a high not seen in 1,108 days. I'm going to stop you right there in the aggregate. It's never been higher. It's gone down a little bit. Some new polls have come out. But hey, Trump's still trending higher than he's ever been, especially in his dealings with the coronavirus. Check this out. I'm not saying, I, look, you know, I've done a ton of videos about Democrats panicking. Here's another article. Now, I, I love showing the RCP average. Um, I try to do it as often as I can because it's updated regularly. But we can see here that 49.8% approve, 47.7% disapprove in Trump's handling of the coronavirus. So if you want to come out and screech Trump should be charged with crimes against humanity, go look at the polls. You are in the minority. The Hill says Democrats struggle to keep up with Trump messaging on coronavirus. That's because the only card they've ever played is that Trump is wrong no matter what he does. But that can't be possible, can it? This is the weird world you know, that, that, that we're living in where You've got some people who think Trump's not that bad. Yeah, you, know, you don't got to like him. You know what I mean? And that's the kind of the world I occupy. Whatever this is, they've chased themselves off the rails. They're off the cliff. The Democrats, their base is being chased into nonsense by the media. It's, you know, the, the, these media outlets, 
And I, I know not everybody. I've got an article I want to show you to give some credit to some people. You know, uh, the Hill, for instance, has been has been has been okay on some things. But you have these people, like at the New York Times and the Washington Post, the people in the press corps. They ask Trump nonsense questions. He's always wrong, no matter what he does. They dis they, they discount evidence. Or people like Jim Acosta, who just stand up to rant and don't even actually ask any real questions. That's what we're getting from the press. And so long as the Democrats chase after that narrative. And so long as their only strategy is I'm going to obstruct the president, they're never going to get ahead. It's just never going to happen. They've been warned about this. Quartz writes on March 28th, ads attacking Trump's coronavirus response could backfire. Of course they could. The American people are watching in real time what's happening. They're bored. They want to know when they can get when they can get their lives back. You know, to a lot of people in this country, work is their life. And you'll, you'll hear from a lot of these activists. I, I, I can't stand it. They say Americans have an un unhealthy, you know, uh, relationship with work. Sure, whatever. I love working. I love being productive. I love doing things. To me, everything is part of my bigger goal. Everything I do is, is, is you know, stepping up to do better. And people like that. And right now, a lot of people can't. There are a lot of people who are sitting at home saying, I want to get back out there doing my thing. I want to I want to save the world. I want to build. I want to create. I want to help people. So they can't. What do they do? They obsess over what the president is doing to get the job done. Guess what? The polls show they like it for the most part. So when the Democrats come out off message with attack ads that make no sense, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to say, what are you talking about? The president's doing what, what he can do. Can't you just shut up and pitch in? Look at it this way. Here's how I see it. You got you got a guy, you got a big fire, right? Your house is on fire and there's a big orange man and he's kind of a jerk and he's bailing water and he's saying this water over here, it's a little murky, but we're going to try it. We're going to try and splash the fire with it. And I'm like, OK, dude, I get it. Splash the water, please. And you got some people in his administration talking about how they're splashing all this water. And then along comes Schumer and this Golonsky lady and they're just yelling. Then, then Pelosi comes up and says, I'm forming an oversight committee to talk about whether or not Trump is, is bailing water properly, is, is, you know, is throwing the water properly on the fire. And Adam Schiff says, after this is done, we're going to investigate you for your throwing fire. You're throwing water on the fire. And I'm just like, dude, I don't care about any of that. Put the fire out, please. Can you guys just grab a bucket and start throwing water? Could the Democrats please, like Schumer? So, so here's what happens with Schumer. He's proposing a coronavirus czar. Thank you. Now, I'm wondering why you need to do that, because Trump has a task force. He wants to form a second task force. But this is actually OK. This is a good thing. I respect Schumer for at least saying like, hey, I got an idea. I know somebody who could actually help with this. Do you need my help? It's fine if Trump says no. I got no I, I'm not going to get mad at Trump for saying no. If you're putting out a fire and someone comes by and says, hey, I can I can try and get some more water. And you're like, no, no, actually, we got a ton already. I'm like, all right, man, let me know what you need. That's what I want to see. So is what Schumer doing perfect? Not really, but I'm a, I appreciate that he's here now saying, you know, here, here's my idea to help. Instead, from the other Democrats like Pelosi and Schiff, what do we get? Investigations. Yeah, well, that's not going to pay off. Joe Biden, you're not going to win. Democrats need to pretend, stop pretending that they can be adversarial to Trump, especially right now. Joe Biden's nonsensical gibberish is not helping his cause. Team Trump is happy to share. Earlier today, Joe Biden... It, it, it just keeps happening. Now is not the time to think you can score points for your side, especially when your candidate is Joe Biden. Now is the time to say, let me grab a bucket and pitch in to put this fire out. That's it. That's all you're going to do. Now, look, if, if you had someone like, I don't know, not Joe Biden, and you wanted to say like we could do a better job, I'd be cool with it. But Joe Biden, it's just this, this video going around today where he says something like, I, I don't even know what he said. He's not saying cohesive sentences. He's just muttering. I know it might seem like I'm being mean, but if you haven't heard what he said, trust me, he said something. I don't even know. Do they have the quote here? What did he say? We cannot let this. We've never allowed any crisis from the Civil War straight through the pandemic of 17 all the way around 16. We have never, never let our democracy sakes second fiddle. Way they, we can both have a democracy and correct the public health. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to do, man? I can't believe the media is protecting this guy to an extent. I, I, you know, you've got the media trying to just keep a straight face about this. But let's be real. People in media are absolutely trying to help Joe Biden. Let's be honest with everyone. There should be no story coming out about talking about what he said. I see these stories and they're like, 
Joe Biden touts the need to, to resist the crisis and stand up in, in trying times. No, he didn't. He muttered incoherently that we've uh, never let our democracy sakes second fiddle. What does that mean? I looked it up. I don't know. Did he mean take second fiddle? Is that this, this, the phrase? Instead, what, what you get from the press is they'll, they'll correct what Joe Biden said and in, in, in they'll put in what they think he was trying to say. Instead of just saying Joe Biden mutters incoherently with gibberish words that aren't English, they'll say Joe Biden says America will not be second best. That's, that's not it. So you, you see how they play this game. No matter what Trump says, it's wrong. Even if the CDC and all these other countries are saying it's not wrong, the media will say it is. Then Joe Biden comes out, mutters and mumbles, and they'll say, here's what he really meant. They'll call for investigations and do nothing to help. And then the best we can hope for are these resistance people saying Trump should be charged with murder. They're lying to Joe, uh, Joe Biden, PolitiFact, video shows President Donald Trump saying COVID-19 is, a, is Democrats' new hoax. PolitiFact, false. Yeah, we get it, man. None of this is real life. The only thing they can do is obstruct. And you need to remember that at the end of the year. I'm not saying Trump's a good president. I'm not saying he's the person you should vote for. But I'm, 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 I'm almost, I'm not even at the point where, where Joe Rogan is. Do you see what, uh, what Joe Rogan said recently? I did a video about it. He said he'd rather vote for Trump over Biden because you don't even know where Biden's going to be in a year. I've never even gone that far. I said I won't vote for Joe Biden. I never said anything about getting close to voting for Trump. Joe Rogan's got no problem saying it. He's the perfect example of Bernie or bust. He's a, he's, but he's sane and rational. He's right. Dare I say, I agree with him. I would rather vote for Trump over Biden. I'm not saying I would, and I'm not saying Joe Rogan would either. But I can't imagine that at the at the end of this crisis, in, you know, come November, we're going to look back and be like, I appreciate all the obstructing that the Democrats did. You know, they held up the bill for a week. They launched a bunch of investigations. They did very little to help. And then they demanded that Trump be charged with crimes against humanity. I'm glad they did that while, while everything was falling apart. I'm glad that Democrat Bill de Blasio told everyone to go out and have a big gathering. I'm glad that the the you know, the, the chair of the health committee in New York told everyone to defy the coronavirus scare and go out and, and have and celebrate. I'm happy that Nancy Pelosi went out at the end of February, February 24th, and told everyone to come to Chinatown and smile and shake hands and do all that stuff. Trump never did that. You can argue that Trump downplayed it too much. I think that's fair. But Trump formed the task force. He was sure to travel from China. He never encouraged people to go out, shake hands and hug each other in downtown. That was Democrats who did that. I'm not even going to blame. I, I'm going to be fair. Look, I, I bring that up to make a point. I don't hold it against, to, for, to, to, you know, for the most part, I don't hold it against Bill de Blasio for not understanding the severity. Nobody did. China lied to us. They didn't tell us what was really going on. They were hoarding medical supplies. I'm not going to hold that against Bill de Blasio. I'm not a big fan of the guy, but I think, I, I don't believe he, he, he wants people to hurt. I think he's, he's trying to figure out what to do. And it's a very difficult situation. The same is true for Cuomo, for Newsom, for Trump. And so long as everyone's on board with trying to solve this problem, then I'm going to stand behind them and say, let me know when you need me to throw that bucket on the fire, because that's what I'm going to do. But for now, calling for Trump to be charged with murder, the people in the media who are sitting there just trying to ask random questions for the sake of looking useful, dude, if you want to ask Trump why they haven't shut down grocery stores I got something you can do to, to you know, to, I, I, I got something for you that can be a better use of your time. You know what's a better use of time? Learn how to sew, make some face masks. Oh, you've never sewn before? Hey, well, I'll tell you what, learning how is more useful than wasting time asking Trump questions. But better yet, when you write these stories saying that, you know, Trump is getting people killed or whatever because of hydroxychloroquine, when you downplay this, instead of recognizing that several countries have, have you know, recommended this and you tr look, listen. If these countries are saying it's a treatment, then the appropriate reporting would be, for now, it looks like there's some positive effects. Be careful. You want to make sure your doctor, uh, you know, uh, prescribes you the correct dosage, and and he knows best. Trump is correct. It may work. It may not. The CDC says there's positive results. Now you'll need a doctor to tell you the appropriate appropriate dosage because you got to understand you weigh different than somebody else. You're taller than sh shorter than somebody else. The media doesn't do that. They just scream orange man bad. And what you'll get is a, 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 a mentally deranged group of people, Trump derangement syndrome, Trump anxiety disorder, whatever you want to call it. And then they'll come out screaming, Trump must be tried for, for crimes against humanity. 
but it's not sane life. It's not real life. It's not, it, you, you can disagree with Trump on this and say, no, 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 I, th- I don't think you should be, should be recommending that, man. People are going to freak out. That's, that's okay too. But this murder charges, they've lost it, man. They've completely lost it. The media owes an apology to Tom Cotton. The media owes an apology to, to a lot of us. Tom Cotton was, you know, raising red flags in January and they smeared him for it. They smeared him relentlessly. It's, it's insane. They said that he was bringing up weird conspiracies about bio labs and all that stuff. Now the Washington Post is actually writing about this. And although they didn't apologize to him because it's different writers, they bring up that, yeah, Tom Cotton had a good point. The mainstream media is now entertaining the possibility that the coronavirus emerged from a lab that was doing research, not as a bio weapon or anything silly like that, but that there are bio labs in China, in Wuhan, very close to the market, and they were researching this stuff. It's a possibility. That's the Washington Post reporting that. But this is what we end up getting. I'll give a shout out to The Atlantic, April 5th, just, just the other day. It's not all bad. There are some good writers. Nadia Shadlow writes, consider the possibility that Trump is right about China. Critics are letting their disdain for the president blind them to geopolitical realities. Absolutely on point, 100%. Will Trump be arrested in the, or, or tried by the International Criminal Court? No. You must be a child living in la-la land to believe that's ever going to happen. You know why? Because you, let me just point out George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, and you want to talk about the, the absurdities Trump recommending, you know, that the FDA look into a treatment is murder. Spare me, man. Welcome to 2020. It's been a heck of a ride so far. and We got three more quarters to go. I'm looking forward to it, I guess. I'll see you all at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast News. It is a different channel. Thanks for hanging out.